I want to bring in our good friend David Harsani from the National Review, who's been covering Cuomo and, and a more grievous wrongdoing that he has not been held accountable to yet. Uh, we'll talk about that right here. David, how are you, sir? I'm well. Thank you for having me. First, what else do they have on him? <laughs> right? Like, are you surprised he resigned? He's the Cuomo name. He's got the unions and all the rest. They have to have something else on him for him to have resigned, right? I, I don't know. I mean, I think um, he's not really beloved by many politicians in New York, you know, the more progressives especially. And uh, I think maybe he just felt like the support wasn't there anymore. And this is was would possibly be a way for him to save his political career in the future, maybe run for the Senate. Who knows? You know, I, I don't know. What really? The, I mean, I doubt that. But I mean, maybe that's what, how he sees it. Um, I think that if there were... You know, Democrats lose nothing by him resigning. They're just going to another Democrat's there now. There'll probably be a more progressive Democrat running and win the state, uh, you know, when, is it 2022? So um, I don't know. I just feel like he probably didn't think the support was there and he didn't want to deal with it anymore. But it's it's hard to say. I don't know what else yeah, they might so have. It's so weird that, like, I'm, maybe I'm just cynical enough. I just think these people's egos are so massive that they would never relinquish power unless they really needed to. Right. Well, maybe maybe there's something coming. I mean, listen, I, I you know I wrote this the other day. I think that uh, obviously, you know, what he is accused of doing is is bad enough, but he's done far worse. I mean, he is corrupt and he's acted as like a sociopath. Basically, he he his order was the worst or most deadly mistake that any governing uh, entity had made during the pandemic. You know, possibly up to nine or eleven thousand people died because of it. And uh, then he tried to suppress that, uh, those numbers. He tried to change those numbers. And then even when he knew what he had done and, and he had, you know, even as he was, uh, you know, hiding those numbers from the press and the people, even after the Associated Press reported that that might have been the case, he took a book deal for 5 million bucks, probably used government services to help him, you know, and, and resources to help him, him write it and walked away uh, a far richer man um, for having failed. So he is, there's something really wrong with that guy. So I, I don't know, maybe maybe there is another AG <laughs> report coming that's going to find him guilty of other things, for instance, using resources. So maybe he saw that coming yeah. and said, it's gonna be very difficult to stay, stick around. That, that really is one of the more surreal moments of this entire last two years is that Cuomo wrote a book on leadership during, like in October of it all, right? It was still early on relatively and wrote a book on leadership, that's so insane. Um, let's go back just a half a beat because I think everyone's heard of this um, uh, controversy, right? Uh, but may not be totally up on it. So what exactly did he do with nursing homes? Well, I think it was an executive order or some kind of executive action. I don't exactly know how it works in New York, but um, that forced uh, nursing homes to take in co people who with COVID and, not, and barred them from testing those people, which we now know you know, COVID is most deadly with elderly populations. And and he, in that move, likely, even though there's not been a ton of coverage of it, frankly, uh, lately, probably, you know, helped spread COVID into the most, uh, you know, in the most susceptible population. So um, other states had, had similar, had initially done similar things, but like Florida, for instance, but they quickly, once they saw that that was dangerous, turned it around, but he hadn't done that. But listen, so someone could say, hey, you know, we didn't know a lot about it, right? Uh, he made a mistake. Uh, we didn't know what was going on. But uh, he hid the numbers after. So he did know he had done something wrong or he tried to hide that. And and uh, I think that that was, shows that it was, you know, he cares about politics far more than he cared about the life. Certainly not someone who should be writing a book about how to deal with the pandemic. That, yeah, that's exactly it. I was going to play a little devil's advocate and be like, well, we didn't know. It was early on. Uh, do you know, but it's the turn, lack of turnaround, lack of humility there, of course. Um, do you know what his justification was in the beginning? What, was he trying to like not have people overrun hospitals or something? What, what was he at least pretending to say? I think that was the, uh, I think that was the purpose. They, you didn't want hospitals to be overwhelmed and a lot of the older people were going to the hospital. So once, I guess, uh, you know, they, you know, you remember they were setting up hospitals in Central Park and makeshift hospitals yeah. around the hospitals and people were really nervous. And obviously many, many uh, people perished, especially in New York. But, you know, he keeps talking about how successful and others still keep talking about how successful New York was. They have the, they have the second highest 
fatality rate of COVID of, of, of any state after New Jersey, which is essentially, you know, part of the metro area, and then Connecticut's yeah. there too, and Massachusetts. Um, so I think that, yes, I think, to go back to your question, I think the reasoning was that you didn't want to remember, remember we wanted to, all the initial policies were not about saving lives as, as necessarily just not overwhelming hospitals and, 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 and the system. Right. Yeah, and of course he benefited by being the anti-Trump. I've, have, have you seen the media, maybe since Obama, just lift up a person and praise as a hero? He won a stinking Emmy for the love of people. I was going to mention that. <laughs> he won an Emmy. He won accolades from all kinds of people, from Fauci, from, uh, you know, just all around. This is the way to handle it. This is the way to handle it. And no one's ever had to answer for why uh, they're praised. But listen, the, the the sexual harassment cases, no one could know that that was going to happen. So I don't, you know, I see a lot of people with the gotchas, you know, but, you know, you don't know that the guy's going to be corrupt or the guy's going to be a creep. But you do know that he messed up when it came to COVID. We knew that because even the Associated Press had a big story, and I forget the exact timeline, but before he won the Emmy, I think months before he won the Emmy, talking about how the numbers weren't right. Everyone keeps talking about Florida and Santis and 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 this myth up myth that they had uh, messed with the numbers, but it had New York was the one. They still haven't added yeah. those eleven thousand deaths, I think, to the to the overall count. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more. <laughs>